Your Massachusetts real estate market update for August 22nd, 2022. In this video, as always, we're going to talk about single families, right? We're going to talk about the condo stats, right? And I'm in just continued disbelief as inventory continues to shrink. I can't believe it. We're going to go over the Boston rental market and how they received some not so great news. Mortgage rates, ouch, that is just the best way to describe this week. We have got to talk about those mortgage rates. And then there were some national headlines about how housing records its sharpest decline in over two decades decades we're going to take a look at the massachusetts data behind that and see if that's really the case but first let's jump into single families in the single family market there were 5182 units on the market now this is down another 115 units from last week or about two percent and that is now a decline of six percent from our high peak on July 25th. There are 1,046 newly listed properties that came on the market last week, with two, which is 246 less than the same time last year. So this is about a 19% decrease year over year. There were 1,179 single family homes that went under agreement this week, which is 145 uh, less than the same period last year, which stands for about 11% decline. There were 813 single family homes that sold in Massachusetts since last week for an average sale price of $754,000 and a median sales price of $602,000. And then the months of inventory. Months of inventory, again, is how we figure out if we're in a good, strong seller's market or a buyer's market or an equal market. Zero to five months is a seller's market, closest to zero. That's where sellers have the most pricing power. We recorded a 1.28 months worth of in, uh, inventory on the market for single families. And this is compared to 1.33 last week. So that months of inventory continues to shrink um, year over year inventory, right? When we look at the gap uh, compared to inventory this year, compared to inventory last year, that gap continues to shrink. Um, last week, it was 816 houses. This week, we're down to 623 houses. So that gap, it just continues to get less and less and less. And these inventory declines, I just, I, I can't stress it enough. I, I did not expect it. And I'll tell you what, it's really shaping up for a great fall market for homeowners in the state of Massachusetts. In the condo market, we had 2,476 units on the market. Now this is down 66 units or about two and a half percent compared to last week. We had 380 newly listed condos that came on the market last week, which is 15 more than we saw last week, but 127 shy from the same week um, last year. So that's a 25% decrease in the amount of new inventory year over year. Pretty big numbers. 383 condos went under agreement, and this is compared to 530 units that we saw go under agreement last week. So that's nearly a 28% decrease in the amount of properties going under agreement. 322 condos sold last week for an average sale price of 656,000 and a median sales price of 654,000. Months of inventory, again, how we figure out which what type of market we're in. This is uh, 1.49 months for the Massachusetts condo market, which is down from 1.51 months last week and by the way real quick i just wanted to thank everybody that hit that like and subscribe button last week that was my biggest week ever for uh having so many subscribers new subscribers join the channel uh as well as that was my most liked video so i just can't thank you enough and if you're new to the channel and you like kind of the information that we're talking about in, in the massachusetts real estate market then don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button below so that way we can give you the update next week so let's jump over to the mortgage market as I said earlier, ouch was the best way to sum up the mortgage market and this week. Last week, we stepped away from that boredom, if you will, of the nice consistent rate staying in that nice range we saw for about a month. Last week, they just shot up. We uh, ended up in the weeks being somewhere in the 5.75% range. Some banks are out there quoting uh, interest rates in the sixes for the 30-year product. Um, interest rates, they shot up to the highest levels than we've seen in over a month. So, they, I mean, this was a pretty big move in the market. So why did interest rates shoot up? It's a great question. And the first reason is because in the UK, as well as Germany, inflation data just skyrocketed. It came up a lot higher than investors had initially really anticipated. And then on top of it, we also had initial jobless claims actually down, which now the investors are kind of saying to themselves, well, maybe this market isn't starting to slow down. Maybe last week or last month, I should say, the inflation data that we got that showed that inflation was leveling off, well, maybe that's not the case. It was just a fluke number, which ultimately means that the 
Fed's going to have to increase their rates a lot more, stay as aggressive, right, and do it for a longer period of time. All things that the market necessarily doesn't want. So that's why interest rates shot up. Now, the other big thing is when you look at the 10-year Treasury yield, the 10-year Treasury yield actually went above 3%. And the reason why this is so important is that our interest rates for mortgages are directly tied to the 10-year Treasury yields, as you can see from this graph. So if you're trying to get a good idea of where our mortgage rates headed or what happened to mortgage rates today, well, if you see the 10-year Treasury went up a certain point, you can pretty much guarantee that the mortgage markets kind of fell in the same pattern. Not exactly, but it is one of the best indicators as to where our mortgage rates are, go, and they are going. And then you can also take a look at the forecast, what investors are betting, right? And that's when, when, when investors kind of say, hey, we think interest rates are going to go down in six to nine months. They're actually looking at the 10-year treasury bets by investors of where those yields are going to be. That's how they come up with that data. So let's turn to the Boston rental market that we talked about and that not so great news, right? Boston was actually ranked as the number two most expensive city in the U.S. with an average rent of $4,878. Now, this is up 17% year over year, which is a lot, don't get me wrong, but it's looking pretty good compared to Redmond, Washington, whose year over year average rental rate was up 84%. Kind of crazy, right? The big takeaway here is that Boston continues to be one of the most expensive cities, not only rent in as well as buy in. And well, quite frankly, it's because we are the best just as a heads up. That's the reason why. Now, the housing market, national headlines where the housing market had a sharpest decline in over two decades, right? Like crazy, right? And they were saying month over month, oh my gosh, the sky's falling. Month over month sales are down nearly 6%. Last week we saw news about how it's a housing recession. Well, let's take a look at Massachusetts data because as we have said numerous times, number one, month over month data doesn't matter. And number two, real estate is local. I can't hit that home enough. Real estate is local. So let's take a look at the Massachusetts data and compare it to years past. Now, in July of this year, we sold 4,561 single-family homes, and this is compared to 5,577 single-family homes in July 2021, 6,026 in July of 2020, 5,866 in July of 2019, 5,926 in July of 2018, and then 5,581 in July 2017. It's lots of 5,000 numbers there, right? We'd actually have to go back to July of 2012 in order to find a sales month range, right, in the same range as we had, which was 4,468 units sold in July 2012. Now, here's the thing that nobody is saying. 2012 was an exceptional year. I remember selling real estate back then. It was a fantastic year. Us going back to 2012 levels is not necessarily Armageddon in any way, shape, or form. So it's not that bad of news. Now, I can just hear it now. Hey, well, what does this mean? What, what, what were the sales inventory numbers like, sales numbers like back in 2006, 2007, 2008, when the, you know, the Great Recession? Great question. Let's nip this one in the butt. In July 2006, we had 3,902 single-family sales. Sell. In 2007, it was 4,228. 2008, 3,784. And 2009, it was 4,321 single-family homes sold. So yes, sales are down. But as I've said it before, sales are down, but inventory is down even more. So using the last five-year average of houses sold, we come to 5,795 single-family homes. On average, have sold in the last five years. So if in July, if we've take you know this 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 July's number, that means sales are ultimately down 21 percent. That's a lot. Don't get me wrong, but let's take a look at those inventory numbers. Same thing. Last five years, inventory numbers in July comes to an average of 9,301 units. If we take our inventory levels now and compare it, or I should say at the end of July, and compare it to the average July numbers, that means inventory is down by an astounding 43%, right? Yes, sales are down, but inventory is down a lot more. Sales down 21%, inventory, supply is down by 43%. 
There's the numbers. It is not the Armageddon that they are painting over the country here in Massachusetts. I will say it again. Yes, in markets like Boise, Idaho, um, Austin, Texas, Charlotte, like those markets, you should be worried. We, as of right now, should not be worried here in Massachusetts. The dynamics of the market continue to be strong. And I will also say this, if you're a seller, again, I, I know I said it earlier, but if you're a seller, it's really shaping up to be a fantastic fall market for you, which I don't think anybody was kind of really expecting, quite frankly. And all this awesome data, right? All this year over year data kind of makes me start thinking about a video that I'm currently doing. So if you're wondering, is there gonna be a real estate crash in 2008? In this video, I am actually going through all of the you know inventory numbers, sales numbers, comparing it now to 2008, right? You don't want to miss that video. So make sure if that's something you're interested in, I should say, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, I always love hearing them. Throw them down in the comments section. I really love chatting with you. I answer everybody. So, you know, <laughs> just throw it. Positive as well as the negatives, right? I answer everybody, so I really appreciate you take, taking the time to watch this video. And if you want to talk your own personal real estate matters, right? You know, obviously they're all confidential. Don't throw those in the uh, comment section below, right? Reach out to me. All my information is below. I would love to chat with you friend to friend, talk to you about, you know, what are your real estate goals? How can you ultimately, you know, accomplish them and help you put together a strategy that ultimately gets you there, right? Again, my name is Jeff Chubb. I work with the Chubb Homes team of EXP Realty. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, throw them in the comments. And if you could do me one favor, if you could hit that like and subscribe button and maybe even possibly sharing this with friends or family members who are thinking to make a move, I'd really appreciate it. So until next week.